Welcome to the Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast, a podcast designed to help you increase your influence, develop your leadership, and maximize your results. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I am super excited to have with me again today uh, because this is the second time she's been a guest on the Fearfully and Wonderfully Me podcast, my friend, Sarah Claudia. And I know you are going to be so inspired by this um, podcast episode because I know her story and it's incredibly inspirational and it, her story inspires me, but her strength and her resilience Um, Sarah Claudia is an author and a speaker, and I'm super excited to have her back talking about her second book. Sarah Claudia, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, and I'll take a minute to brag on you too. I mean, you've been the one inspiring me uh, to write and to get out there, so a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is from your encouragement, so I appreciate it. Oh, I'm just honored to have seen um, what God is doing with your story and how you've been open to that. So um, we'll tell the listeners just a little bit about you and a little as much of your story as you want. I know we're here to talk about your new book, so I want to get to that. But but for those who didn't get to maybe hear your um, when you were on the podcast before, share with us just a little bit. Okay. As Rhea mentioned, I am a writer and a speaker. I'm from the West Georgia area. I'm 27 years old now, but back when I was 20 years old is really when my story begins. And in 2015, I was a junior at Barry College. I just finished up my junior year. I was a nationally ranked equestrian on my college team. I mean, I had all of these plans ahead of me and Suddenly, very unexpectedly, all those plans went dark. Um, excuse my figurative <laughs> speech, but a little teaser, I, I lost my sight very suddenly in May of 2015 after a routine surgery. Lost sight in both my eyes, lost hearing in one ear completely. So I went from being a normal college student one minute to being somebody with a disability the next. And to say my world was rocked would be an understatement. And at at that point in my life, I was very lost spiritually. I'd I'd been raised as a Christian, had that foundation, but it, it took me really coming back to God and connecting with him again and growing a relationship that I don't think I ever really had to begin with in order to learn how to move forward in my new circumstances. And that's exactly what God helped me do. I I went back to college eight months after losing my sight, graduated a few years later, started writing, started speaking. God gave me this amazing ministry and this platform where I can share what he's continually doing in my life. You know, I just, I get chills when you share that because I, I know every one of us has have faced adversity, but um, so many of us can relate to life just changing in a flash, right? It just, you know, one minute, like you say, you were completely normal with hopes and dreams and a future that you were looking forward to and planning. And then this happened and life was transformed for you. And I know that you're very transparent and sharing that, you know, along with the transformation was the was learning how to go from independence and you know you had been very successful and and were going on to be very successful and suddenly found yourself dependent on other people for things just like you know going to a restaurant something we take for granted sometimes and I love how you have used that to be become stronger right you have Mm -hmm. you've said you know what this happens and it influences me but it's not going to determine me and that's my favorite thing about you Oh, well, thank you. I think it reminds me of what you say a lot. You know, we can be bitter about it or we can be better because of it. And that's, I've, I've really learned that lesson firsthand because it would have been so easy for me to stay bitter. Um, you know, people tell me all the time, you have the perfect excuse to sit and do nothing. 
but that's a miserable existence. Like who wants, when you really think about it, you know, you enjoy your lazy Saturdays, you enjoy doing nothing every now and then, but who wants to have to do nothing all the time? That, that was not me. And I knew that wasn't the life God had for me planned. So yes, it was harder, but I had to learn how to get up and just get going. But you're right. The independence, losing that, that was definitely one of the hardest parts. Mm. I, I just, again, I'm inspired by just your, your growth and, and we're so grateful you're sharing that with us. So you recently released your second book, Unseen Steps. Tell us about that because I had an opportunity to read it and I know there are going to be people who are going to find so much inspiration from this. I I love this book. I'm so excited to finally get it done. It, it's something that I've literally been working on for years. As you mentioned, it's my second book. My first book was a devotional that just came out of me journaling during quarantine and and really getting into the Bible. But this book is my sight loss journey. It starts just a few weeks before I lost my sight and it ends with me walking down the aisle at my wedding day. So it's six and a half years of trials and triumphs, all the little journeys I've had and really how God has walked me through every single experience and how he's shown up and shown out in so many different ways for me. And it's just amazing. It it was so hard to write because there's so much that has happened over the past six and a half (laughs) years. And I was overwhelmed by all the things I could have included. And I I just wrote and rewrote and rewrote until I said, you know, I got to be done. So, (laughs) (laughs) well, I I know. And then you feel like so much of a piece of you goes into when you write Mm -hmm. a book about your story and it's very, it's very personal. Mm -hmm. So um, I love, there are a couple of stories that I I really love that, that stood out to me. And, and, um, I would love if you would just share the story of when you first met, because you ended the book, like you said, walking down the aisle on your, on your wedding day. And that's just such an awesome story of, of God, um, in, in all of that. But I'd love it if you just share that, um, a little bit about that. And when you first met your now husband. Yes, I would love to dating is something that is so terrifying um, when you can see, but especially when you can't, it, it was pretty scary going into it. I, I had a boyfriend when I first lost my sight, that relationship ended pretty quickly, uh, you know, nobody's fault, but we both just had changed so much. And after that, you know, that was the last piece of normalcy that I felt like I had. So I, wasn't ready to date for a long time. And I was pretty busy adjusting to my (laughs) new normal. So when I finally started getting ready to date, I prayed about it a lot. And I prayed for God to send me somebody who would build me up in him, build me up in Christ and, you know, have that important relationship with God. And so I, I got this opportunity back in I want to say 2019 to host a local radio show once a month. And <laughs> I'm the type of person when I get an opportunity that I know is going to be good for me, I say yes, even though I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened when I said yes to this radio gig. And so I started kind of thinking, okay, who can I ask for help? Who can I ask for advice? And I knew of this local radio star, we'll call him, named Seth Kane. And I had been listening to his show for quite a while because my mom loved it. And he was so funny and just kind of always brightened my mornings. And I was friends with him on Facebook as well. So I thought, "Mm, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to Seth. I'd like to meet him anyway. So I sent him a Facebook message and long story short, we had met up for coffee, talked about radio a little bit but more just got to know each other and after that we started dating pretty quickly we went on our our first real date was at my house we watched a movie and then he showed up with 
braille uno cards <laughs> and uh... I, knew, <laughs> I knew at that point I was like yeah this this he's something special because he never really made me feel blind but he still took into account my blindness which that's a very very hard thing to balance and he he did it very very well from the very beginning and we love the same things we love disney movies our first date i think was watching a goofy movie and we were both quoting the whole thing so we just i mean he was perfect i knew god sent him for me and from that moment on we both prayed separately for this relationship and when it was finally time to talk about marriage we were both on the exact same page and it, it was just very god ordained mm, i love that i mean it just it shows incredible thoughtfulness on his part. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, God just really aligns things for us. And I, that is awesome. I just, I love that story. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just the kind of story that reminds us that God does give us a double measure. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's important because we all need that encouragement. Yes, definitely. And, and prayer, prayer was such a big part of our relationship. And I don't think people today, especially young people, I don't think they pray enough for their significant others, even before they meet them. You know, it, it, mm. it, you got to pray for God to prepare that person for you as well. And that's exactly what he did with Seth. Mm. And that's a that's a good point you make. A lot of times we are, are, are waiting around for that right person and yet mm -hmm. not willing to necessarily become the person that mm -hmm. would attract that that person we want and then also yeah asking god to just say you know what i, I want this and bring this into my life but being open to the timing that, mm -hmm. that god has in mind so you know there's another story that you shared in the book that um i think is powerful because so many people can just relate to feeling isolated obviously not to the necessarily to the extreme that you've gone through but but a lot of us during times of our life have felt isolated or alone or different than other people or you know outside of a peer group and you shared a story of after you lost your sight kind of going back to hang out with your group of friends and um how you how it impacted you would you just share a little bit about that Yes, I was so excited after I lost my sight to get back to college. And I thought once I got back on campus, everything is going to go back to normal. And like I said, eight months after losing my sight, I moved back into a college dorm, which was a huge accomplishment. I'm, I'm still very yes. proud of that. <laughs> um, but I wasn't quite prepared for how different everything was going to be. And I went out to eat with a group of my friends, my teammates for the very first time. And I was so excited. I wanted to show them how independent I was. And I had done a lot of training, a lot of learning how to function as somebody who's blind and how to, you know, cut my food by myself and navigate my plate on my own and all of these things. And so I ordered my food, I was chatting with all my friends, and I went to go take a piece of my food, take a bite off my fork. And very quickly, I realized that I had placed a whole lemon in my mouth. <laughs> uh, you know how sometimes you go and, and they try to make the, the food all fancy with all these garnish and all this stuff. Well, they had a whole, you know, slice of lemon on there, rind and all. And I... Oh. put the whole thing in my mouth. And <laughs> I'm saying the the table was silent. Like they knew, they saw what I was doing, mm -hmm. but nobody really knew, you know, do we say something? We don't want to embarrass her. But as soon as it happened and I made that bitter, you know, <laughs> look on my face when I realized what I had done, everybody kind of broke into nervous laughter. And honestly, I was, I was mortified. Uh, mm. I was so embarrassed. And it made me feel, I don't know, it kind of dumb, but also just like you said, isolated because I felt like I was the, the butt of this, you know, mm. joke. Um, and, you know, they didn't mean it mean I'm, I'm used to the nervous laughter now that sometimes <laughs> happens. I just roll with it because when you can't see silly things are bound to happen, but 
that was the first time that I really realized how hard it was going to be to interact with people and to feel normal and to just relate to others. Mm. I, you know, and what I find interesting is that I, I can't imagine, I know you were just embarrassed and, and yeah, feeling clumsy and, and kind of out of place, but, but what I love is that you have learned to laugh at yourself with such mm-hmm. grace now. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a big lesson in that for all of us, because we all do things that we make mistakes and we feel like, oh man, I was <laughs> such a dope to have done that, or, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah. And and realizing that none of us are perfect, right? We just have to learn to laugh at ourselves. Yeah, it, it makes life a whole lot more fun. You know, I, I just got my guide dog and I've been doing a lot of independent travel. And it reminds me, I, I was talking to my mom on the phone the other day and I was telling her it was the first time I had gone into the coffee shop and ordered a to-go order by myself and worked my way out with my dog. And, and she said, well, did, you know, did anybody say anything to you? And I was like, no, I... I think I kind of grazed some people on my way out, but I, I just, I just went with it. And, you know, I know there's people watching me and I try to think, you know, they're not, cause I get self-conscious every now and then, but I think to myself, you know, they're not analyzing every little thing I do. They're probably saying, wow, look at that girl, what courage she must have. And that's, that's what I have to remind myself. Mm. Oh, that is so powerful, right? The stories we tell ourselves. Mm-hmm. because a lot of times, yeah, we could tell ourselves a story about they're making fun of me or they feel sorry for me, or we can tell us the story you're telling yourself of like, no, I'm doing something that's amazing. And I have the courage to do that. And people are inspired by that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what I've learned is when people do make jokes or, you know, they do snicker or laugh, it's usually from, from their misunderstanding or maybe from their insecurity. And that's an opportunity for me to either educate them or, or try to build them up. And that's what I've, I try to remind myself that as well. Mm. I love that. And, and that's one of the things I admire about you too, is you are just such an encourager for other, other people. And I know you've recently started doing that at a whole new level. Yes. I'm, I'm so excited about this, this new part of my ministry and it's called live in love. God really placed it on my heart because I know there are so many people out there who need encouragement, who are going through something and they don't know how to turn to the Bible to find encouragement. You know, it seems daunting or they don't know exactly how to ask God or how to notice when he is working in their lives. So I've started doing one-on-one encouragement sessions with women because you know, I love group settings. I love speaking, but there's just something about one-on-one where you really feel like you can open up and connect with somebody. So I'm offering these one-on-one encouragement sessions, either in person or over Zoom or a phone call, and they're free of charge. You don't have to pay anything. All you have to do is contact me. You can email me or go to my website. And I would love, love, love to hear what you're going through and just try to encourage you through it with with God's guidance and help, of course. Mm, That is awesome. And there again, just an example of how you're being so open to what God has and just saying, okay, we'll figure it out. We'll, Mm -hmm. we'll make this happen. And, you know, that's one of the ways that it seems like that you're really giving back through encouraging other people. Um, Yes. I, I want them to see me and my story and I don't, I never want somebody to feel sorry for me, but I I love using my story and what I've struggled with because I can see God all through it. And I want to show other people that no matter what you're facing, it doesn't have to be as big as blindness, but everybody's problems to them are big. And so I don't want people to see my story and think, oh, what I'm going through is nothing. I shouldn't complain. I want them to see my story and say, okay, if God was there for her through that, he's, he's there for me through this and, and, you know, encourage them that way. Mm, Absolutely. So can I ask now that that this is, you said, this is your second book. And can I ask if you've got thoughts on another book? (laughs) I've already got it in the works. Whoa! Um, (laughs) Yes. 
it and I'll give a little sneak peek it it's going to be another devotional like my first one I, I love writing devotions mm. it's really I feel like it's really how God works through me but it's going to be all about fear and how to stay connected with Christ in order to find courage because I think that's something that a lot of us face fear and anxiety and it, it's so prevalent today Mm, it, it absolutely is. And, and I think you're right that that's something we all can relate to. And, and, you know, life is tough. You and I've had that conversation before of like, mm -hmm. everyone goes through adversity and hardship and, and we're touched by that. And, and, you know, learning to learning that God doesn't cause the pain in our lives, but he can use it is a, is a tough lesson mm -hmm. because, I think so many of us struggle with questioning, like why, why did this bad thing have to happen? Why did it have to happen to me? Um, and it's very, it's very easy to be frustrated or afraid or anxious when we don't understand, we don't have the answers. Mm -hmm. And that's where the faith comes in. Exactly. It, it reminds me of Job in the Bible, you know, all these bad things were happening to him and he didn't understand why, but little did he know that God was up there, you know, working on his behalf. And you, you never know what God's doing in the background. And I don't believe he made me blind. I, I don't believe that it was something to punish me or to hurt me. But, you know, maybe he allowed it because he knew that I would turn it around and use it for his glory, you know, so you never know what God can do with your pain. Mm, that is that is so powerful just such a good reminder for all of us um that absolutely you don't know what what god can do with it um when we're willing to let him ah uh, that is awesome i always just you have just such a, a lot of insight i think we can learn from so working on book number three and you have your new guide dog and a new i mean being married in and of itself is <laughs> you know there's a lot of change it seems like this has just been a season of, of change and growth for you it has and it let me tell you happened all of a sudden i got married in may i got the call in july that they had matched me with a dog and i would be started starting training in august so i went to michigan for three weeks left my new husband at home <laughs> so it it has been wild and um, bringing this dog home has been such a challenging journey in itself but it has been so wonderful so much independence i mean i'm, I'm slowly 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 getting my independence back and it seems like it's happened as I've learned how to depend on God and how to depend on others as well. Um, slowly, I'm, I'm getting that little bit of independence back. And it's, it's been a very, very sweet taste of freedom, let me tell you. Yeah, absolutely. So what was it like when you brought the dog home? Because was your husband able to go with you to, to get the dog? No. So it's a residential campus up there. And they don't allow um, anybody to stay with you. So wow. I was gone up there for three weeks. It was pretty, pretty hard to be, you know, away from each other after being mm -hmm. married so, so uh, soon, but we both knew it was for the best. And I brought my dog home and my husband, he works pretty weird hours because he's in radio and he does uh, football play by play and broadcasting and all that. So the day I got home was actually a Friday and it was a football game. So he didn't get home until about 1 a.m. Oh, no. So I had to get me and this new dog up and take him out to meet my husband. But they they bonded immediately. So they they're buddies, which I'm glad. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's almost like, yeah, you've you've just had so much. And those are almost two very new, but very interesting relationships. And, mm -hmm. and the fact that they get along is probably pretty important. <laughs> yes, it's like it, having this this dog, it's like having a new baby. And then, you know, I'm trying to train my husband to act right. So it's just <laughs> a lot of training going on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. It, it sounds like that uh, <laughs> is definitely going to be a challenge. Uh, well, you know, it that's, you know, there again, just another example of, of taking what life has given you and and using it for the best um, i love that so working on the book and you 
obviously with your encouragement sessions and growing in your ministry and you're still speaking, you're like, you are one very, very busy lady. I am. And I have had to really have some, some come to Jesus moments, if you will. And, you know, let some things go and really pray about God showing me what, what's the best avenue for me to travel and I think that's a big thing too, for people to, to realize you you can't do all the things and letting God decide, you know, which, which way to go and what's going to be the best use of my time. That's been something I've really been having to learn lately. Mm. Me too. I mean, that, that's something (laughs) that that maybe I still struggle with at at Mm -hmm. times. So I understand saying no to the good to say yes to the great. And it's still hard because the good is good. Exactly. It's very, very hard. And, you know, you don't want to let anybody down. I know a lot of people in my life are very bad at saying no, um, but it's just something you have to do sometimes for your own health. I mean, you got to have that time to yourself as well. It's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Sarah, Claudia, I'm just so grateful for you sharing your story and your book and your wisdom and your time with us today on the on the podcast any uh final thoughts and and also let us know how we can get in touch with you if anyone's interested in reaching out to you for the encouragement sessions or where to get your book yes i will i will say this we're approaching thanksgiving and you know it's it's always good to think about what we're thankful for i have been most thankful, I think, for God's faithfulness. And that's been something that's ringing true in my life. So I just want everybody out there to know, you know, whatever you're going through, God is faithful. He is going to keep his promises and he's going to walk you through it. And you don't have to be thankful for the bad times in your life, but you will be able to look back and be thankful that God was right there holding your hand. Mm. And you can find me at Sarah Claudia Ministries on Facebook and Instagram. Then my website is sarahclaudia.com. You can find all my information about my books there. They're also available on Amazon. And there's also a Live in Love tab on my website. And you can read all about Live in Love, the encouragement sessions, and how to contact me. All that info is there. You can also email me at hello, Sarah Claudia at gmail.com. And that's Sarah with no H. (laughs) (laughs) Always have to put that little reminder in there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Just to make sure people can get to you. And I will put the links uh, in the show notes as well so that people can reach out to you. Sarah, thank you. Sarah Claudia, thank you so much for your time today and for sharing with us. I'm just so grateful as always inspired by you. Thank you so much for having me. Take care.